for difference. Uh, in this case, we can easily verify that a plus b is small. In this case, a plus b. So a plus is about b. Sorry, our a piece. Uh, Finite AP, make sure this cardinality makes sense. And you can actually use it to prove that um, for arbitrary two finite set of A and B, in integers, the set of A plus B should be at least the set of A plus and B minus one. So it's uh, easy to see. The second example is less trivial. So it's in a torus. So here is uh, A, B, R short. Compact arcs or compact intervals. The torus. Your torus is uh, arc functions. So we can naturally embed our torus in zero one intervals with zero equal one. By short means um, the length of the interval is short, say one third or one over thousand. So in this case, we have. Is equal to the mirror of A plus the mirror of B. Okay. The third example is in uh, Euclidean space. Euclidean space. And then in Euclidean space, we have Brumikowski inequality. So we know that the mirror of A plus B. So the of A to the one over D plus the mirror of B to the one over D in total to the power of B. Um, and we know that equality can occur here if and only if A, B are homothetic convex set, essentially convex sets of the same shape. <clears throat> I'll give you another bit of examples, a simple another bit of examples. Simple doesn't mean simple group, uh, easy than a bit examples. The G is say SO3R sounds uh, torus. And then you can choose AB. Okay, I'll just use A to make that. So A is SO3R, say equal one to uh, from zero to one or one thousand. And in this case, you can see although G is not a bit, but all the interesting part of A. Uh, is in the torus. So that in this case, we can see that uh, the mirror of A plus A, two times the mirror of A is two times the mirror of A. Here are some examples. Um, I hope from the example, we can see that um, if you want to make your product size small or some size small, let's say product size small, your size should have some group like structure. One can assume one can view that original progression looks like a group, right? Almost like a group or abelian, sorry, abelian group, abelian like structure. Um, so that means if your group is far away from being abelian groups, probably it's very hard to make this mu AB small, a product size small. Uh, so I want to, uh, so here is a very important result by uh, Ria, Ria and independently by uh, Pure and Zabo. So in this result, it's not even the group, it's far away from abelian. Uh, in the sense that if G is a uh, finite simple group of V type, so in this case, if A is a finite subset of G, and say A generic G is a generic subset. And we know that the set of A times A times A uh, should be at least A plus C. C 
see as a constant only depends on the group G. It actually only depends on the rank of G. So this result is useful to uh, prove lots of uh, fundamental results in combinatorics like for game Gunbird uh, machinery and this Bobby's conjecture for a group of Z type. Okay. Is there some intuition for why you need a threefold product to make this true and not just a twofold product? Uh, yes. So for twofold product, there's some um, examples. For example, so if A is some subgroup, you need no points. So it's a classic example. And in this case, you're going to show that uh, A times A is always small, right? Because A times A contain H, contain AH, H8, and A, A squared. Uh, I think the first person to understand this was Health God. Yes. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. So this result. Should mention. Yes. That's where the three came from. Yeah. So the first result is obtained by Health God for SL2FP. So, uh, okay. and uh, so here, if you have uh, if I have a un h union of point a, then a square may be small, but a cube will be very large. So a cube will contain uh, h a h, and this usually will be very large when h is not normal. Um, okay, so I want to give you some intuition. So here uh, you can see that in general, if G is not very abelian, A times A or A times A times A, usually we don't really distinguish this two, will be large. <coughs> okay. So I want to mention a bit of intuition that when the product size can be small. Um, let's still look at the finite case for the moment. So for a finite case, there's a nice result by Bria Graham Tom. I'll just write, write PGP. Um, okay, sorry. So before that, I want to introduce a um, definition. So here I always mention A times A small or A times A times A small, but actually there's an easier uh, definition called approximate group because so this definition here, I want to make the subset, the product that's small is actually uh, make it look like a group. For example, if you know A times A equal to A, then A should be a group. Or if A is a subset group, it's metric. So here I want to define this approximate group. So this definition is actually given by Tao in his uh, which is a very important paper. So approximate group mean, uh, so let's tell me see. So X such that G, G is some group, I mean group, and X A is K approximate group. It's a K approximate group. Um, if X times X can be covered, covered by K left translates of X or left cosets of X. Um, so probably that explains uh, why we care about A times A times A instead of A times A. So approximate group is equivalent to say an A times A times A is small. So they are more or less equivalent by losing some powers on K, K to the O1. Um, but actually, in lots of cases, we don't need to really distinguish tripling like A times A times A and A times A uh, to doublings. Because if A times A times A, <coughs> sorry, if A times A is small, uh, from this example, one can see that actually A contain a large approximate group. So you can find uh, another approximate group H such that A and H are comparable. So <coughs> they can be covered by translates of each other's. Okay. So here, um, so this fundamental result by Brittany Rental say that if G is a finite, uh, if X is a finite, I'm highly finite, approximate. So I hope you can understand my handwriting. If there's any question, just tell me to ask. Um, then, we can find another approximate group y inside x. So we cannot say directly about x and g, 
but we can find another group y inside x to the four. Uh, y is also, let me just make it quantitative. So x is k approximate, y is k to the, let's say, O1 approximate subgroup, such that the first I want to say y is large, means uh, x, because if you just have this, y can be like trivial. <laughs> so here is x can be covered by finitely many uh, life process. Definitely, the group generated by Y is virtually no potential. So, means you have a new potential of finite index, of finite index. So, here being new potential can be seen as a generalization, sort of being abelian. The new potential group is not far away from the abelian. So, here this uh, BGT tells you in general. If you have any group and you can find a finite approximate group, that means your group, okay, so this is not, may not be G, but more or less your group is controlled by some new potent subgroup. So fairly abelian. Okay, so the question here is uh, I mean, nobody prevent us studying like uh, infinite approximate group. So here I have a finite approximate group. And it's very natural to ask what happened when we were said is say open. I say open. You have infinite many points. Okay. And the naive guess is probably we have the same result. Probably uh, the same results you hold if X is an open approximate group. Uh, X is an open size signify this small doubling or like covering condition, then it is almost a billion. Uh, but that is not true. So here is another example. <coughs> so let's say G is a legal of dimension D. Um, okay. And G is the algebra. So you can, we can find a small neighborhood of identity in this Lie algebra. So B is, uh, let's say, open, uh, tree compact, uh, symmetric, but it's not very important. So B is a sufficiently small neighborhood of identity, um, convex subset of G. Then for a small, sufficiently small lambda, that, so this said, the image of this exponential map um, is 10D approximate. So here's the reason is, in these small scales, um, multiplication behaves near identity. Multiplication behaves like addition in Euclidean space. Okay. Somehow your group could be uh, far away from being, uh, you know, new potential group, but you can still have this uh, approximate group. This is a bit harder to So usually, uh, because of this result, we expect a, a slightly different phenomenon for continuous setting for open approximate group. And this is obtained by uh, Cardino, uh, who is a student of very tall. Cardino. Um, so that BGT is obtained in 2012, and this is in 2015. Okay, so we have similar results, but instead of new pattern, we can only have bounded dimension D group. So let me write it up. So we assume our site is open and pre-compact, and we'll some mere examples. Um, 
open and pre compared peer price in uh, locally compared group G. Let me have the same thing. Um, I use X here, so maybe I should use X here. Okay, so you can find Y subset of A to the fourth. Um, so H is a subset of Y. H is compact and normal subgroup in, in, in the group. So here H is uh, compact. You have two conclusions. First, uh, you have largeness. So why is large? Okay, I still have the X can be covered. Okay, one. Left translates. Process of work. And second, you have Probably from this example, you can, you can guess we have some bounded lead structure. So, we can understand that by quotient H. This dimension so that result. Yes. Oh. Yes. The first one. Uh, the result of upon is what is the relationship between these two results? So the proofs are first result first, and this later, and the proof are different. Um, I need to think about if the second one imply the first one because the first one k is a to the power small power c. So, so my, my real question is, so there is a result of B1 and such right? So, <laughs> Sorry, okay. yeah. yeah. So this result, I was not aware of this, but uh, there is a result of Benoit and this, uh, there is a result of this Excel product, basically analog of mm -hmm. the first year, the first year. for compactly groups. Uh, but he proves product theorem in a metric setting. Okay, I'm not aware of that, actually. Okay, maybe we can talk about yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. By the who? This accent? Oh, yeah, yeah, okay, I, I know, I know. Okay, yeah. So the proof, uh, uh, yeah, the proof of a metric setting, actually like dimension setting, like bell cover number for for, the, for for this one. Yeah, if I have G, it's a simple group, A subset of G and A satisfies some bell space um, condition, and then you have dimension of A, A you have this, uh, yeah. I, so does that result imply I, this one? I don't think that result imply this one actually. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think that result like this one. I actually one of my friends asked me the same question a couple of days before, and I I didn't think about it too much, but I think it doesn't imply this. But I will I will check it with maybe you can discuss after this, after this talk. <laughs> So I give you some classic results in this field. Maybe this is less well known because this paper is not published. Um, but uh, hopefully you can have some intuition that if you have a small doubling set or if you have a proxy group where mayor of A is small, then you should have some bounded dimension structure. In the continuous setting or in the discrete setting, your, your group should be close to some abelian subgroup or new potential subgroup. Okay. But what I want to mention is uh, most of the results, the bound is uh, not really quantitative. So for example, the results here, because you're using uh, the model theorem, Roshansky the model theorem is a model theory. So they are ineffective and not quantitative. And for BGT, uh, I think one of the most, uh, one of the most <laughs> connector or like important connector is how to make this one quantitative. I won't talk too much about this in this talk. Um, so I want to talk about some of my results, which is give you some quantitative bound, quantitative understanding 
for uh, Lie groups. For that first result, that one is a uh, tuning track. So G is compact, simple. Um, so A is a compact subset of G. Then we have Should be at least three plus C. So here C can be taken by 10 to the negative 17. So it's a commutative bound. Okay. Uh, Does it work for PID groups? Uh, no, I think we, we need to use some. Um, yeah, I, no, I don't think so. Yeah. So it's like some more, your enemy is some sequence of simple, uh, obviously not sporadic group. Uh, so it's making you put 10 to the minus 7 G. Oh, yeah. So you're trying to put something completely uniform. Yes, yes, yes. So here, um, I care more about small dimension group. Like say SO3 over something. For a large dimension group, I will mention another result which is better than this. Um, so you may ask why I need to use AAA here. And there's a um, example. Well, I wouldn't say uh, coming from Borgain, but a very similar is one of Borgain's construction on polynomial from Lucia type uh, construction. So here, um, <laughs> The question is, is that true that one can prove this result? Uh, this is true for all. I assume the mu is a normalized higher measure. That means the whole group of measure one. So that, that is important. So the question is, can we prove some result like this? And the construction, we can find the construct. Okay, maybe some of you already see the kind of example. Uh, so let view SL3 topologically. Um, I mean, so each uh, axis is a rotation axis and the length means a rotation angle. So we can choose our set to be, okay, there are multiple ways to construct. So for example, all the upper sort of clockwise rotation with uh, angle less than 180 degrees. Um, okay, half part, you can prove by making this uh, boundary small, the set will be uh, always uh, smaller than one half, one half minus epsilon. And new AA will always smaller than one. <coughs> because there's always something, some rotation this does not cover because of this uh, strip. So somehow, Sorry, so somehow uh, you cannot prove this result. You cannot find a uniform uh, constant, a uniform gap here, but uh, we can prove another, another result. Um, if A is sufficiently small compared to one half, so we can prove new A A. It's larger than two new A plus C times new A. Uh, one minus two yeah. So to avoid the example, I think this is like best possible result we can expect uh, in this direction. Uh, okay. So I want to mention a conjecture by Green and Brilliard. So I will put it here. I'll say conjecture is 78. Anybody guess why you're 78? No? That's when Green was born? No. So Bain has uh, unpublished uh, like my favorite 100 open problems. And uh, this conjecture label is 78. <laughs> uh, yeah, but, yeah. 
sort of close is related to that. Does he put any money to anything? No. Uh, <laughs> um, otherwise, I'd be more motivated. <laughs> <laughs> the, the money is determined as an amount. Easy to conjecture. Yeah. Does he get punished if he's wrong? <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Yeah, he pays seventy eight dollars if he throws. <laughs> I think if we put some money there, at least I can get some proportion of this uh, money grant. So the conjecture is if G is F of three, A is complex about G is sufficiently small, has sufficiently small measure, then it has a should be at least 3.99. So actually, I would say if you replace this number by four, it should also be correct. Uh, actually, I guess it should be even strictly greater than four, I think. Um, <coughs> so how to see the counter example, why this is a four here. The same, you can review this as a three to plot it as a sphere, and then you consider all the rotation very close to x-axis. Considered is said to be this is correct. And because although SO3 is three-dimensional, but one of the expansion is absorbed by this SO2, absorbed by this group, so you would expect uh, the expansion, the growth rate is four. So that's a conjecture. And I hope this also gives you the difficulty to solve problem in this direction. So somehow we cannot only view our site locally, we need to view the site globally. We need to study the global shape of A to show that, okay, the shape of A should be, shouldn't be weird or something like a nice site. Okay. Um, okay, before I talk about the proof, I want to mention a few words about applications of this result. Just use this small blackboard for applications. So we have a couple of applications. <coughs> the only appeared one is for um, inverse theorem for small doubling set. So I, want to, so I think this is a you know, classic problem people study in additive combinatorics. So what happened if you have A times A is small? If mu A is small, what can be said about A? So that this is a, let me just write it. So G is a connected unimodular. Probably don't know what is unimodular, it doesn't matter. Unimodular just means your higher memory is very nice. It's not only left translation invariant, it's also right translation invariant under translation for both directions. Well, which, which is a nice analogy of uh, cardinality. So connected in a modular uh, locally compact group. So ABR compact subsets of G. Then we have mu is a hard, is a hard measure on G. So we have least. I put mu here just in case the group is com uh, compact. So the question is, there are two questions. The first one is by Kemperman himself. Uh, when, when do we have, so what can be said if equality happens? And another one is by Hell, uh, fairly recently in 2018. So when equality almost happened, means this is bound, upper bounded by A plus B plus some delta. I'll just say almost happened. So some history, I, I won't write it down. So Kinesar, even before Kampman, classified equality happens when G is abelian. Uh, and Bilu classify near equality happens when G is torus T to the B. And later, Tao himself in 2018 classified near equality case 
when Gia is appealing, contact appealing. Okay. But his bond is weak. So he used non standard analysis. The error term is uh, ineffective. By error term, I mean, when do we have an inverse theorem if you have mu AB is smaller than mu A plus mu B plus delta? So that delta is ineffective, it's very small. It's, uh, you can make his argument effective, but his delta will be at most mu a squared or something. It's not the correct order of magnitude. And then more recently, Michael Chris and Iliapolo, they have uh, a better quantitative bound for a compact, uh, deep, uh, sorry, compact abelian group. Okay, but all these results are for uh, abelian groups. For non-abelian groups with, uh, with Chumin Tran, so uh, in general, so this is with, uh, okay. maybe I should say. So we classify equality and near equality for compact groups. My second result is Jimpo and uh, myself and Wei Xiang Zhang. We classify equality and near equality uh, for non compact group. So essentially, um, answer the question. This is the applications. So I think I have a bit time before talking about the idea of the group because I, I think there are lots of experts sitting here who probably are like uh, curious uh, how do we get this gap? So because in health got result, he used uh, Morgan Castell's theorem. In uh, BGT and Perizabo, they use uh, algebraic geometry, they use large and pink non concentration inequalities. And we are using a different, uh, different idea. Okay. But uh, before that, okay, before that, I want to mention a few words uh, if you care about higher dimension group, because um, I think Peter mentioned about this, right? So here, uh, my energy is small dimension group. I remember when I was talking to Zhang about this, did Kempelman actually ask about a general G? What did he ask? General G? You say question by Kempelman. Uh, oh, yeah. Uh, he's asking about a non abelian uh, semi simple group. Uh, what? Uh, completely general, locally. Yeah, yeah. He asked for unimodular locally compact. Did he suggest what should happen? Yes, I should mention this. Yes. Actually, I prepared a page, I just forgot to, yeah, forgot to mention. That's why I feel like I have more time than I expected. Thanks. Okay. So, if you think about Taurus, you have, okay. That's also why I mentioned this example. Okay, everything are connecting now. <laughs> so is you can- after Freiman? Is after Freiman more? No, Freiman is 1970s, Kampermann is 1960s. So it's before Freiman, but after Kniezer. So Kniezer also, and also this uh, Mainz, Mainz theorem about this uh, density of, of sets. So I think at that moment, those type of inequality is popular, I guess. Um, okay, so example, guess. So if we look at Kampermann's question, uh, what can be said in quality holes, we can sort of guess the answer. So how to guess it? We know that if we have a torus and ij are short intervals, maybe it's not even short, ij are intervals, then we have, so here mu is just a mirroring torus. Let's assume the sum of Mary is smaller than one or two. Okay. So in general, if there exists a continuous surjective group homomorphism, by mapping G to torus, then we can choose two intervals in torus and consider their pre-image. And because they satisfy equality in torus, it's easy to check satisfying equality in this G. 
But apparently, this is not general G. Not every G has a homomorphism. Okay? Or almost, I don't, okay, I'm, most of G, you, you don't have this, right? But somehow, at least you can guess for those G, you have equality happens. And probably you can guess if that's the only possible case. And our result actually confirm it. Uh, so how? So let me just, uh, here's my result. Okay, look at this result. I slightly make it stronger, how to make it slightly stronger. So my condition is G is a compact simple Lie group and A is compact. But actually this is also true. So if G is connected, compact, then one of the following happens. So either you have expansion or you can find a morphism matching like T to power so this is sort of like toric combination. So either G is torus almost, or you have expansion. Okay, so this is uh, the compromise question. <coughs> and our results confirm this guess. So if you have compromise stuff, uh, near equality or near equality, yeah. you only have this uh, toric domination. The group should be almost. A few words about high dimension group. So when G, when you know, you already know G has high dimension, you can have a slightly better result. And a bit disorganized about this. So this is a theorem by myself. And Richard, uh, Richard Chan. So I, uh, I think Richard gave a talk here. When you, yeah, but the, uh, no, the different audience. Yeah, different so audience. That yeah. That's why I didn't. <laughs> um, and also, he presented in a reverse way. So yeah. I will present it directly. So if I took me a while to even see that relation. <laughs> yeah. You can also find it on the uh, YouTube. That's nice for uh, It was in the analysis seminar too. Okay, okay, I see. It was in the thousand. Okay, I want to mention two results, and both of them, we shall talk about uh, that result there here at different seminars. So here, if G is a compact simple, of dimension D, A is uh, sufficiently small. So we can make it quantitative, but this is really, really small, like one over a thousand to the D to the D, something like that. So A is sufficiently small. Um, then we can have mu A to A to be at least um, two to the D. I think our exponent is around one over 10, could be a quarter, but one over 10 is safe. <clears throat> so we have a very nice expansion, but uh, unfortunately, this uh, constant is very small. So that means if you care about SO3, care about Benz conjecture, uh, this is trivial. So this is just give you a two or even something smaller than two. So two is trivial, but a compromise inequality. Okay. Um, so this is what happened for when you have non-compact, uh, when you have compact simple new group. And one more word is uh, what, 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 what happened when the group is non-compact, probably you already want to ask. Uh, because in non-compact, our life is slightly easier because we don't need to care about sufficiently small set. We don't need to care about what happened when the A squared is a whole G. We can just work on every A. So for non-compact group, this is actually a conjecture asked by, asked by Magbis and Hanstock in 1954 for general group. Um, at that moment, they only care about non-compact groups because they feel like if G is compact, you can just take your set to be the whole group. So you cannot see any interesting thing. Um, so I think this we shall Okay, we prove an inequality. Let me just write it down. So if G is 
connected. I say non compact. Okay. We have a Bronkowski type in the college. We assume the group is unimodular to make it make more sense. Non compact unimodular. Because in non compact groups, the group could be uni non unimodular. Uh, so mu and b. So Brominkowski type. Okay. Next question probably want to ask uh, what is this? What is a minus h? What is uh, what is h? Um, so okay. I need to go to the gym more often. Um, so if you look at that example in SO3 um, here, so you can see that if your set is a neighborhood of some compact subgroup, then hopefully your expansion is absorbed by this neighborhood. Um, so here, for example, if you look at SO2, look at SO2R, logically you can view it as an uh, as an open neighborhood. And then SO2 contain, okay, this is my SO2, SO2 subgroup. So your site could be a small neighborhood of this SO2. Okay, I draw too many lines, but let me do. Okay, a small neighborhood of SO2, and hopefully this uh, group absorbed one dimensional um, expansion, so you have only four. So here, N is, is my non compact dimension. Maximum dimension of the complex subgroup. <clears throat> this H is unexpected. We will expect the correct result. We don't really have H, but we still have a correct order of magnitude. H is at most n by three. Um, so I won't talk about what is H. The uh, is complicated, but uh, for <coughs> for the most of the group, we are interested in H is zero. For example, in solvable group, in linear algebraic group, those H are zero. And uh, the only uh, the first many cases actually SL2 tilde, the universal covering of SL2 have H and H is one. So if you're interested in this, we can discuss a bit later uh, after the talk. So I have um, around 10 minutes. So I want to talk about the idea of the proof of that result. So the actual proof. <coughs> Sorry. Famous uh, linear algebraic group case, very real. Uh, this Brinman Minkowski sharp, basically. Yeah, it is sharp. It is sharp. No, it's H is zero. Yeah, in that case, H is zero. And also in the paper, we construct uh, we construct examples to show that you cannot do it better than n. So n is uh, best possible, and we prove it for n minus h. So back to these very gross gap in compactly groups, or like towards uh, conjecture 78. So, so what is the idea? So we actually get some idea from the proof of Hilbert Fitz problem. They're constructing a sort of pseudometric. So the, the initial idea is if you have G, let G be and in T you have metric. Euclidean metric in T, you can compare distance, but T is linear. So this metric have a nice property we call linearity. So for every element x1, x2, x3, so the distance of x1, x3, now you have only two cases. So either it is x2 plus x2, x3, or difference. Make it make sense, yeah, it's absolutely right. <coughs> okay, intuitively, every three points, there must be one point in the middle, or, yeah, there must be one point in the middle. So either x2 in the middle, or the other point is x3 is in the middle. 
So we call it linearity. But somehow we need to be a bit careful about these one half points. But here, let's assume our, our distance is smaller than one tenth. So it's almost like bar. Okay. Then we want to construct some nice pseudometric in G. So pseudometric is just a metric, but you allow different elements have distance zero. Assume D is a pseudometric. But somehow D has a nice property exactly like that. So distance for every three elements in G, we either have some plus or minus. And it's very easy to show in that case, G has a homomorphism map to torus. So actually G quotient, the kernel of this pseudometric will be torus. Okay. Now the problem is, uh, where is D? <coughs> Let me finish my sentence on the board. If D is linear, uh, and the kernel, the kernel of this metric. Cool. Um, but usually, uh, we don't really have this nice thing. It's very hard to find a linear metric. So the at most we can do is almost linear. So this is almost that one it means you have an error term. So we are expecting this plus an error in general G. But still, <coughs> how to construct those matter? It's very easy to define our pseudometric. Actually, the pseudometric, <laughs> our metric. distance between G1 and G2 is just uh, the measure of G1A, uh, symmetric difference between these. But we only define this pseudo metric for a small neighborhood of identity. But somehow but it's easy to show this is a pseudo metric, but it's very hard to show it has any nice property. <coughs> As I mentioned before, um, you want to solve the problem, you need to see the global uh, global structure. So we do have some, um, get some idea from Larson pink inequality, non-concentration inequality, but uh, in a different sense. So let me show how to show that our set A looks nice. So we define a, some not very nice, given not very nice set. Delta Kakao. So H is a one dimensional torus. Okay. Maybe I should say this. A is delta Kakao. If for every H closed. H is one dimensional torus. You can find this translation of uh, I want to say coset. or A and G to make it more sense. <coughs> so if you uh, 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 replace delta by one, it means it's contained a coset, a translation of every one dimensional torus. So it's like a KKR. And we can show that, um, so our first propagation on the paper is you can find this epsilon depends on K and delta. Uh, such that such that for every uh, uh, set A, the small layer and K approximate 
means small doubling, mu n is small. Uh, a cannot be delta kakaya. So this is a key proposition that give us our set doesn't look very bad. So you can at least find one direction. Actually, what can make it stronger? Many direction, most of the direction. Um, H, A intersect, any translation of H, any cosine of H has small matter. So I have maybe five minutes, so I'll do it quick. So how do we, um, what is the next step? Okay, now remember we have two more things. One thing is how to construct a metric satisfy almost near condition. The other is how to how to obtain the homomorphism from this metric. Um, I'll be focusing on the first part of this talk. So now I choose <coughs> I choose a nice H so that because A is not Kakea, means you can always find H. All the translation, all the fibers are short. Now I choose this H. The square means horizontal VR cosine of H, like left cosine, is small H. So we can we'll group like this. <coughs> so now all the fibers are short. So what we prove here is so inside H. The reason I choose H as a vertical torus because H has a nice metric here. So inside H or any cosine of H, you have nice metric. <coughs> and then you want to compare this uh, pseudo metric G1A. So you have to link this with uh, the distance in H in torus. Uh, G1 A intersect H and G2 A intersect H. So what did we do here? So ideally, let me show you the picture. So what I want to show is all the fiber are, are have the very small length. And actually I, I can show all the fiber have similar length and all the fiber look like similar. So I want to show A is like this. It's almost like a strip. And then generically, so most of the our fibers are the same. And for GA, so this is GA. If one can prove some structure like this, then by looking at a, gener <coughs> a generic fiber, the distance between here will be almost the difference between this translation. So the length here is almost. <laughs> So to prove this, we use some probabilistic argument. So instead of considering A times A, we choose a random fiber in A based on the fiber length. So let's say A times B. So the measure of A times B should be at least the measure of A times B intersect H. Somehow the mirror of AB is also the mirror of ABX because you need modularity. So this is sort of this, but let's just look at the easy case. And then we can write it in terms of fibers. G over A times B intersect H. The total intersect H. D, uh, So this less in H, and this B intersect H less in H. So this is larger than G inverse A intersect H times B intersect H. And we can use Kampman inequality here. So this term should be at least the measure of G inverse A intersect H. G inverse A intersect H plus so this term is a real integral term. This will give you mu a. And the second term, if you choose your fiber randomly, this will exactly give you mu b. So what does it tell us? It means if equality nearly happens, 
So this step is almost equality. That means, um, okay, mu x y is almost mu x plus mu y in torus. But we know everything in the torus. That means they are intervals. So use this trick, you can show that all the fibers are intervals. But there's one more thing. So translate looks nice, but you want to make sure g square looks nice. So it is possible that a and g a look like this, but g square a go back. To do all this condition, we need to use Lie algebra. We need to use the property that Lie groups does not have small subgroup. If g square h, g square a go back, that means that you look at distance, g a intersect h, g square intersect h. So each step is, <coughs> is good, it's like two steps are bad, means you have a compact subgroup in some small neighborhood. So this will be a contradiction because now we are in a legal. Okay. Um, yeah, I think I'm running out of time, so I, I will just stop here. Hey, thank you. Uh, questions, please. Yeah. yeah, so your N is so dimension of G minus dimension of the maximal complex yes. subgroup. Yes. If you, because you know how to do, like how to complete these things in compact subgroups. So if you, if you ask, for instance, that A and B be small, mm -hmm. can you have, can you get a better inequality than that? A, B are small. So you assume, yeah, to begin with that A, B, A, A and B are small. Uh, can you just have n is equal to the dimension of g or something like that? Uh, no, you cannot. Because here is a non-compact group. A smallness can only give you a very, very small neighborhood of your compact subgroup. So you need to have some more global constraint to get a better bound. So okay, say, but not necessarily small in terms of measure, but just like you. Yeah, you have. If you avoid. Uh, yeah, that, is, that actually makes the problem easy. I think the hardest part in those products is you need to look at the shape. If you're assuming A is in a small neighborhood, and then you have two to the D. Oh, yeah. Let's yes. compute the eigenvalues of the other both steps. So can you maybe, in this connection with that, uh, if G is SL2 tilde, mm -hmm. universal cover of SL2R, what, what H do you have there in that case? Uh, H is one. One. Can yeah. you explain that? Uh, sure. So H. Okay. Let's write something here. So what is H? <coughs> the other universal cover, I guess, it's Z basically. That's yeah, yeah, it's a center. But I, I will give you the feature of H quickly. So G is locally compact. You can apply the Hubert fifth problem and tells you G contains an open subgroup, which is a inverse limit of the group. So if G prime is. That's really working with the arbitrary G. I'm talking SL2R. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so SL2 tutor. Yeah. Uh, so here we consider this uh, uh, Q with a radical. Radical of this SL2 tutor. The largest solver group. And uh, I think this is, uh, this is R, right? In that case. Mm -hmm. So this is R. Um, let me think about it. And then we want to, my H is a central, piece, I think. So my H is actually my group uh, G caution this Q and the center, the rank of this. Uh, so, so in this case, so let me think about, so I saw to kill the, um, Let me think about it. So I saw two ways, K and so, so this is uh, from R and then. I'm just trying to see the picture. So you have SL2R which you 
have you any quality now you have this non-linear yeah, yeah, yeah. cover yeah. you've got so usually i don't see it geometrically so i saw it's, it's, it's a global question right? yeah yeah so the, the reason I call it H because sort of helix coming from this aspect. Yes, yes. So I saw two can be seen at this and I saw two tilde. Yes. It's like a helix. Okay. And and you can see it from the picture easily that uh, the center coordinate should be uh, rank one. So it's like different between T and R, but the covering. Okay, I'm just saying, and why does that come into your Brun and Uh So the reason is the following. The reason is this random fiber trick. Ah. So when I choose random fibers, um, <clears throat> Okay, so I approximate A times B by a random fiber in A times a random fiber in B, taking expectation. Mm -hmm. And then so I reduce the problem from higher dimension to a smaller dimension in the fiber, so I can use induction. Okay. But okay. random fiber here, okay. I would um, use this picture so I don't need to draw another box. So if you choose a random fiber here, a random fiber there, and then those are more or less in H. So you can, you can see expansion in the H using induction, but there's no way to see expansion horizontally. And uh, usually if G mod H is already compact, it's all right, because you know that in the worst case scenario, you just have everything compact and short fiber like a strip. But if this is not compact, so this is infinity, then you have expansion horizontally as well. So why do you expect to be able to remove H to be zero here? Um, you said earlier that you conjecture that HP is true with H zero always. Oh, no, 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 sorry. I conjecture not the H always zero, so H is defined. I conjecture N is sharp. Sorry, maybe we are talking about uh, zero. Uh, I conjecture <laughs> the sharp bound should be N. So the reason is. Um, yeah, that's that that this, shouldn't, this issue shouldn't come up. Right? Yes, yes. And why in this case? What's stopping you? Your argument doesn't give it, but why do you believe? Oh, I believe that is true. Yeah. Um, well, in a simple example, which is the first enemy, right? Yeah. So I only have those examples with one by So you have a, a neighborhood of the maximum complex subgroup. I cannot see any other examples. So some of my geometer friends told me uh, lots of geometric results holds for SL2, but not SL2 2, let's say, not in universal, universal coming. So it could be like, yeah, so the tilde is weird, but I still believe it should be the case. We should have one around because I, I think I spent some time constructing examples, but I cannot. So okay, that's a good answer. If you can't make it, confidence in your ability to make that result. <laughs> <laughs> that's very good. Eh? Yeah, I accept that. I couldn't make a counter example, so it must be true. <laughs> yeah. And, yeah, and also, I trust uh, Ben and uh, that their construction. Maybe it's a different story, but somehow if you have a weird construction here, it is possible that similar construction. It just seems that for SL2 tilde, you should be able to answer. Okay. Uh, as a starting point. Yeah, I, I like the kind of simple critical case where you, you know, as, as a good place to start here. Yeah. Okay. So, okay, if there are no more questions, that's any question. oh, no. No, another question. Sorry. Oh, okay. <laughs> then let's let's make this speak. Yeah.